I used to live on Brewster Avenue before the expressway came through and took my side of the street. So the side that you see the expressway is when I was a teenager, I lived on Brewster Avenue. And um, I really didn't, uh, at, at the time, um, a lot of young people that was in music, they was very in, uh, excited about the idea of King Record being right down the street. And they would go down and they invited me to come down and they used to have barrels of, of uh, uh, I guess it was like 45s or 33s, I don't ever know what it was back in the day, but it, what it is, they had barrels of them that it was sort of, I guess they were melting them over to redo them. And, and, and when we was kids, uh, we would go down and we would see people in there. We didn't know who it was, but I know now since I've seen James Brown over the years that he was in there talking to people. And, 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 and uh, so we would actually uh, get a few of the records out of the, the barrel and I, I, I might have one still in my attic, you know. <laughs> but uh, I lived uh, in Evanston for many years. Uh, I went to Withrow High School, graduated in 1960. So, you know, so in, in high school is when I was living on, on Brewster. And a lot of the musicians, I can't call their names right now, but they all, you know, kind of emulated or emulated of uh, what uh, James Brown was about and, and that whole culture of music. And we used to sing on the corners and used to get to school early in the morning uh, to, to go to the auditorium and we used to all be singing and then groups would form. And some of the outstanding groups that uh, came up in Cincinnati actually had members of those people that went to school with me at Withrow. And uh, so uh, it was the whole atmosphere. And one, I can't think of the name of the group though, but it was a group of that I sang with and they actually wanted me to sing bass, but I was a little shy at that time, so I wouldn't go on TV. And it was on uh, Bob Bryan's show that this group went on, and uh, we used to all sing on the corners and things like this. So I was like a corner singer versus one to be a professional singer. But my whole family is into music. My father, uh, which is 91 years old, he uh, used to uh, actually dance at the Cotton Club. So I came up in that culture of music and and uh, arts and uh, I'm a professional artist and also a photographer so I don't know names per se uh, uh, Phil Paul is the person who I over the years when he was playing with Woody Evans uh, I used to take photographs for them and and Woody Evans organized a group that went into the schools and and so uh, Phil Paul and Woody Evans uh, and a couple other musicians that are sort of legends today. They used to go into the schools and uh, perform, and I took their photographs for them, and they got a grant, and uh, also I work with the community organization. Now, I'm the chair of the Empowerment Zone, okay. and it's a possibility that uh, we can uh, do something with the committee that's working to bring King Record uh, back to life, and I hope that uh, I could be a part of that by being uh, the organization I work with, the, which is the empowerment zone. When Jackie Wilson came to uh, the Greystone, which was out in, uh, I think, uh, Rose, Roseline, they used to have a place called the Greystone and Castle Farm and, and places like that. Uh, and uh, I used to go and see them perform, you know. And then I know a lot of photographers, which I am a photographer, that actually captured a lot of the people over the years. So they just became a part of the, you know, the part of the scene in the community. My family went more uh, into gospel music versus uh, rock and roll or jazz. I'm really um, sort of an advocate lover for jazz. Is one of the young men that I work with now that actually lived in there for about 15 years. His name is Bruce Minifield and his son is named Will and they're outstanding musicians and mostly in the jazz. But the whole, I came up in the whole culture of the Cotton Club uh, uh, and uh, the fact that that building was there and then we came, it's like, you know, something was there and you knew it was there, but you didn't pay a lot of attention to it. But a lot of the kids in the neighborhood, they were really hyped on it, what was going on there, you know. And they became some of the best musicians uh, that traveled all over the world. Well, actually I see uh, what Evans is doing, period, what they, they're working on. Uh, it's a saying that you can come in Evanston and you can start from the kindergarten to a uh, master degree. Mm -hmm. So we have all kind of outstanding schools 
in Evanston, and it's considered probably to a lot of people who don't know about Evanston as one of the communities in the inner city or whatever, but Evanston is sort of unique. It's got a lot of uh, professional people who live in Evanston. Uh, like I, I actually lived in Evanston when I was a teenager, and I left and come back, and I've been where I live now on Green Line in Evanston, 23 years, going on 24, four years. So I work with the community council over the years, a lot of different leaders in the community. And since I'm a photographer, I sort of keep a little history of what goes on in the community. And to see King Record Company and some of the plans that the people in, in the community have really is going to be a part of that vitalization of the whole Evanston where it's going to be a place that you want to really become to know about. And like Phil Paul, he's a, a resident who came here years ago. He tells a story about he came here to play for some musicians at King and, and he met his wife and he's been here ever since. And uh, he's a part of a committee I'm working with, with Xavier, Everston, and a few uh, developers now to see whatever they can do to vitalize the King memory. <laughs> well, one of, the, one of the mayors that I knew that was really uh, uh, advocate about that was uh, Dwight Tillery, because he's from Everston also. And uh, he, he, he was always talking about what we need to do about King. Since I work with a lot of community organizations, I, I, years ago, I worked with a group that organized called the Cincinnati Art Consortium, which is called Resident Neighborhood Community Association, RNCA, back in the day. And um, uh, so we organized called uh, Art Consortium, and, and Dwight Tillery came to us and said, you know, uh, that would be a good place to put the Art Consortium in the old king. And so they worked up a committee, they drew up plans, and uh, the city had about $10 million that they had in a fund that he knew was available. And, and, and what had happened, they, they drew the plans, they had a reception, they talked about it, nothing ever happened. <laughs> and so um, I went to another event in uh, Covenant, Kentucky at, um, at the Madison Theater where they were celebrating uh, James Brown's birthday, you know, and uh, his, his daughter came in and some of his children and, and uh, Boosie Collins and all of them. I mean, it was so many people waiting to get in mm -hmm. that they had to turn uh, probably about four or five times as many people was in the place. And it was, it was wall to wall. You couldn't even, it probably was a fire hazard because it, I mean, it was so many people you couldn't hardly move, you know. And they had a, a, a program that talked about it. And, and so the James Brown part of it is really big. That really people are really enthusiastic about it. But, but I work on a committee with Xavier and Elveston, and um, we went to uh, Memphis, Tennessee to see the Stats uh, record company. And uh, so it, it really, I mean, where it's located in Elveston as a, a site, but the ideas that the committee has to involve the the art community involved, the record company back, and, and also the memory of the whole King Record Company, uh, I think it's going to be great. Well, what happened back in the day that we talked to, uh, used to be former Mayor Tillery, mm -hmm. that, that's been about 10 years. Yeah, it's like 95. That's about 10 years ago. <laughs> and I mean, they actually had an a architect to draw a plans, and, and they had a reception at the Art Consortium at 1515 Lynn Street. And uh, then it just disappeared, you know. Nothing ever happened. And then I, I met a lot of people over in Kentucky when they, that was last year. Uh, and the people were saying, we need to really get this off the ground. And then I found out that the community council with Xavier was working on, a, on something like this. And, and so since I'm the chair of the Empowerment Zone, actually uh, I asked some of the people to meet with uh, our uh, development person with the Empowerment Zone. And they've been meeting with her uh, a couple of times and hope that this, with the community and the enthusiasm of everybody, I just hope that this, you know, really get off the ground, which I think it is. It's, it's already designated as a site. Uh, different plans have been already uh, drawn up and presented, and they've had a reception. Uh, the Flavor Arts, uh, they had a reception at the Flavor Arts. Uh, so, you know, and this today, you know, what's going on today with the dedication of the sign and and the dedication of the people from city council is getting involved, the, the governor, uh, center representative. So I think we're on the way. Sorry. Well, the, the city of Cincinnati uh, has a real strong, rich heritage of, of the arts period, total 
our community and, uh, and the region. And uh, so I think the city will benefit for, for really bringing tours and people here in the city uh, from really all over the world. It's just, this is not really just a Cincinnati or United States. This is a world uh, a place for people to come. And, and there's people in other countries enjoying our music and, and the legacies and the history of it, uh, really more and more knowledgeable than the people around this area.